Hi, I'm Dave the RPA Guy, and in this Blue Prism tutorial, we'll be going over the date functions in Blue Prism. You can see over there next to me that we go through all of the functions from add days to UTC time. Now let's start here on add days. I'm going to drag this stage over onto the page and I'm not actually going to open it. I'm just going to edit the expression that's in it up with this expression field here at the top. This only works with certain types of stages like calculation stages and decision stages, the ones that have a single expression field. And what I'm going to do is create a data item for us to use. I have to open this one. I'm going to call it date input one. This will be our main date input put January 1st, 2017 into it, click OK. Want to use that inside of the function we just created, manually type date input one. This is also asking for a number of days. So I'm going to remove this, put in the number four because that's how many days I want to add to the date. Then I'm going to call this date output one. Click this button to create the data item automatically. I'll move this input up here just so it's not confusing. We'll connect these in, reset, run it. Looks like we've got January 1st, 2017 turned into January 5th, 2017, which added four days. That's what we wanted. Let's grab the next function. Add months is going to be exactly the same thing as add days. The only difference is that it's adding months. I'm going to actually copy this part of the function go into here and I'm just going to overwrite that part of the input because add months and add days can effectively take the same input. And then I want to store into a different date output. So I'm going to say date output two. click the button to create the item reset. We'll want to connect the add days to add months and then add months to end play breakpoint reached. All right. So we added four months to January 1st, 2017 and got May 1st, 2017. We'll move now to the date add function. So you can go ahead and see some of the inputs here. It's going to take an interval, which eh, maybe we're not sure what that means yet. We have to look at the instructions, a number. Okay. That's going to be obvious. We're going to add a number of days, months, years, whatever it is we choose to add. And so let's just go ahead and pick our number four and we'll use a different, we'll use something other than days and months. We'll go ahead and put four in here and then our date. That's easy, right? We can go ahead and refer to our date input one. I know we're going to want another date output. So I'll type date output three, create the item, drag it down next to the function we're using it with. The only thing left for us to do is to choose what we're going to do with that interval. I actually frequently go to the documentation that Blue Prism has within the tool. Let's actually go into this calculation stage. Okay. You see this question mark here at the top. I'm going to click that in the search here, I'll type interval. We have a number of results. In this case, we want to go to calculations and decisions. I'm double clicking on that and we'll scroll down. Actually, we can just do control F and search for what we want. Date add uh, and date add this. Is, oh, look at that. It's interval. This table is telling us that we can use date add function and the date diff function with the interval input. I'm going to let you come back and read this more on your own. But basically what this means is that there is a number that relates to a denomination of time. So zero equals year one equals week and so on and so forth. In this case, we've chosen four as our number. And it seems reasonable that we could add four weeks to our date. So let's do that. We're going to take the number one and put that into our interval input. I'm going to click OK. I'll just edit it from here. So you see we have date add calculation stage selected. I'll put the number one for weeks, connect months into this reset and let's run it. So from January 1st, 2017, we tried to add four weeks to that date and we got January 29th, 2017. That sounds about right. The next function is going to be date diff. And we actually already saw this in the help file. Let's look at the inputs. We know the interval is going to be a thing and start date and end date. We want to know the difference between two dates. We will use start date, date input one. We're going to need another input actually. So we'll create a date input two put square brackets around it to make sure it's identified as a data item. And we've got two of our inputs already done. We know that interval takes an input of one, two, three, four, five. We know that weeks is one because we just used it, but let's use a different denomination. Days is nine. So we're going to put nine into the interval spot. We've got date diff nine, which is days date input of one, which is January 1st, 2017. And we need to create date input two. I have copied and pasted that one. Let's go with March 5th, 
2017. Connect our calculation stage in. We don't have an output yet, so let's create an output of date output four. We've connected it in. Let's hit reset and run it. All right, so we took the date difference, date diff between January 1st, 2017 and March 5th, 2017. The date output is 63. So this isn't actually a date output. I should probably have named it something else. I just was going with our format up here, but this is actually a number output of 63 days. Let's move to our next function, format date. We can see it takes date, which we're already used to. It also takes format. We'll see what that means in just a second here, but we can go ahead and put in date input one data item. Let's go ahead and create our outputs. We'll take, we'll say date output five, we're going to go into the calculation stage for format date and click on the question mark. Let's go look at date format. Here's date format and it gives us some different information. This is obviously used to format a date. I think that's kind of obvious, but what you can also do is get pieces of information out of it, like sections of the date. You just want the, the month or you just want the, the year, for example. A common use for this is gonna be to get the date format that you already have to format it in a different way. So let's use one of these examples down below. Let's say that we have a date format like we have right here, and we actually want it to say the, the three letter abbreviation for a month instead, and for it to say month, day, comma, year. We want quotation marks around it, capital M three times, space, lowercase d, lowercase d, comma, space, y, 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 y. Let's reset this. We need to connect in our format date calculation. Run it. Looks like our output is January 1st, 2017, just like we expect it to. Let's move on to the next calculation, and this is actually going to be very similar to the one we just did, where we were formatting a date, except in this case, we're going to format date time. First thing we'll do, as always, is to insert a reference to our date input one. We know that the format is probably going to be similar to the one before, except that it's going to have the time in there as well. And then let's see, we'll go ahead and create our output date output six, click the button to create the item, drop it here, connect in our stage, and then let's go find out what we should put for the format. Format date time. Let's do something a little different and let's get just the time. So it looks like we just put a T for our time. Let's go back and instead of format quotation marks, Inside that, just put T, and let's see what kind of output we get. Okay, so let's go ahead and reset, run it. From the date, January 1st, 2017, we got the time 12 a.m., and that's because if you don't have a time to begin with, it will just assume midnight of the beginning of that day, actually. Let's make a change now to our input value. Date, we'll actually have to change this to date time. So let's do 1, 1, 2017, 5.30 p.m., and we have our date output, which is actually a time output of 5.30 p.m. So it sort of stripped out the, the 5.30 from this time that we gave it. The next we'll do is format UTC date time. So in format UTC date time, we're gonna do the same thing that we've done above, which is use date input one, and then we'll format it. Let's go glance at our help really quick here. We'll get our time like this. We can do a 24 hour clock by using capital H as it looks like. So we're gonna actually do our days, months, years, hour, minutes, seconds. Here's something I like to do is use the snipping tool to grab this and then I can hold on to that information while I work with it. Let's move this off to the side so it's out of our way. So what I wanna type is month, month, day, day, year, year, space, capital H's, so that I have a 24 hour clock, lowercase for minutes, lowercase for seconds, and close it off with my quotation marks. Click OK, and we're gonna need an output here, so we'll say date output seven, create the item, I'm gonna move it down here, connect our stages in, reset, and run. From January 1st, 2017, 5.30 p.m., we have gotten 01011171730. Now that I look at it, the date that we actually chose makes it a little ambiguous to tell whether or not the first part is the months or the second part is the months and then the days being the opposite. You can go ahead and test that actually. Let's change this to February 1st. Reset, run. Okay, so we can see there that it did do February or the month as the beginning and the day as the middle. And you can also see that the rest of these data items also updated properly because we can change our inputs and the functions will still work. 
Up until now, we have been using this date input one, and we've been using this date input two as well, but we've been using a date in this format, two slash one slash 2017. If you are from a different part of the world from me, uh, you may interpret this instead of what I see it. I see February 1st, 2017. You may see January 2nd, 2017. And that's fair, just a different way to format a date. And that actually brings us to the next function that we can use is to deconflict that kind of thing. If you're not sure how the system is gonna interpret your date, you can purposefully tell it the right way. So we're gonna make a date by giving it the number for the day, the number for the month, and the number for the year. We'll give it a double digit date here so we can verify it's not misinterpreting this as a month. I'm gonna say 23 and the month we'll choose is 12, and the year we'll go with is 1975. Let's put this into date output eight, create the data item, connect that stage in, reset, run. We were trying to take 23, 12, and 1975, tell the system it should be December 23rd, 1975. Formats it like this because that's the way that my system formats dates. This way though, you can tell, even if you're not used to this format of a date, that it is going in properly. The next function we'll use is make date time. This is very similar to make date, except that it's gonna take more inputs. I'm gonna go ahead and type the inputs here to the make date time function. The days, months, years, hours, minutes, seconds are all numbers. And then this local input here is asking for a Boolean value, so true or false. If I put true in there, then that will adjust the time that I gave it by four hours in the past because it's gonna start with UTC time. If I say false, then it will give us the same time that we put in, so I'm probably gonna put false. Okay, so I've given it my inputs here. I've said that basically I want it to come out with December 25th, 2017 at 5.30 in the morning, 45 seconds there. And I've said false because I want it to be left in UTC format. I could change that to true if I wanted it to adjust for my local time zone here. Let's reset. We need to connect in the stage so that it runs. We'll need our data output, date output nine. Create that. Now let's run it. All right, so we got December 25th, 2017, 5.30 in the morning with uh, 45 seconds. Let's move to make time now. This will be the same thing as make date time, except it's gonna actually ask for the last part of the make date time inputs here, hours, minutes, and seconds. I'm gonna delete the input here and put in 5.30 and 45 for our numbers. Then let's connect it in with our links. We'll make a date output. 10, which is actually just going to be a time output, but you'll see when I create it here, we'll automatically create a data type of time. And let's reset, run it. Our make time took that 5, 30, and 45 and made a time out of it. Five hours, 30 minutes, 45 seconds. We'll go ahead and move down on the page to use our last five functions. The next function is gonna be make time span. We want days, hours, minutes, seconds. 12 days, five hours, 45 minutes, and 35 seconds. We'll link these stages in, give ourselves an output, date output 11, reset, and run it. And so this gave us 12 days, five hours, 45 minutes, and 35 seconds formatted like a time span, ready to be used as an input for another function if necessary. Our next function is pretty easy. It's the local time. So this should give us the local time. We don't have to give it any input so you can see. For the name of the output here, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with my naming convention for our outputs. Just name it date output 12. We're gonna do the same thing for all of these functions as well because they're all basically the same. We'll say date output 13, create it today. It's gonna to be date output 14, create it. UTC time, date output 15, create it. Link all these stages in together. Reset and run it. Okay, so we got our local time is 2.29 p.m. and I can verify that is accurate. That is the time here right now in this time zone. Now gave us the output of the day, 
month and year along with the full time. That's pretty useful, but you'll notice that the time is different. That's because the, the now function actually outputs UTC time. So you'll see in comparison to my time, it's four hours difference. And then you'd, you'd actually see the same thing with this. If it were after 8 p.m. right now, so say like this time came out to be 8.29 p.m. and this time came out to be August 5th, 2018 at 12.29 in the morning. Uh, if that were the case, then today would also output August 5th, 2018. You got to account for that when, in your business logic as well to make sure that you're aware what kind of time zone comes out of the functions. And then the last one here is going to be UTC time. This is going to be the same time as what the now outputs, except it's just going to be the time part. So 6.29, 34 seconds PM. That's it for the date functions. I think we're ready to move on to the environment functions next time. So we've seen some interesting functions regarding manipulation of dates today, and I hope that's been helpful for you. Remember that if you're not sure how to use a certain function, what kind of inputs it wants, like the format strings, be sure to go to Blue Prism's own help files within the tool. And in the next video, we're going to be moving on to the environment functions. So I hope to see you then.